And we're recording and live on the podcast for Future Soul Mixtape. I'm really excited to be here. I feel like this already feeds my soul. Just being oh. in this sacred space with Amy Cheryl is special. Mm. It is definitely nourishes my soul. I just feel I felt like a huge shift in the energy just as we connected. And as I shared, I'm, I have my essential oils. I have lemongrass today and I have my crystal here because I felt like I had to create like a sacred space for the soul because because our conversations, they always go somewhere. They expand somewhere that you have no way to predict where it's going to go, but something like magical, or, yeah. right? So, and something magical already happened. I just wanted to share now. So we got two cards from the soul's um, truth awareness deck and one of them is name all the things you love so take a, a moment and think about all the things you love and then oh. you turn around and is are you one of them <laughs> i just love that it, to okay. it totally caught me off guard and today's mantra is i give myself all the love and attention i need and the other card that came up was, do I know all my strengths and am I using them? And when you turn it around, it says, we all have superpowers, but it's up to us to uncover them. When we live and lead with our strengths, we're able to show up in our zone of genius. This inspires others to do the same. So today, so action, ask yourself, how can I use one of my soul's gifts today to contribute to this open and ready? world <sighs> and i welcome all the wisdom from the universe here with us in this conversation thank you amy for being here today and i'm gonna let you introduce yourself just tell us a little bit about who you are and just what's coming through you and or even something that has to do with one of these messages which is what what are you feeling doing a check-in mm yeah oh well i'm amy cheryl um i am the founder president of women's work academy restore your joyful magical feminine and check in well what i'll share is when you share the cards what I heard, or what I'm hearing in the moment through the first one, I'll give yourself all the attention and love that you need is that that really is about remembering our inherent value as women. That we are the highest priority. And if we don't develop that relationship with ourselves in the way that we put our energy into relationships or attention with other people or other things in our life, right? It's like the mm -hmm. attention and love and relationship to have with ourselves. It needs to be like, literally what I'm hearing is like 10 X what we put out. So we need to give ourselves 10 X what we put out mm -hmm. as opposed to put out, put out, put out, put out, deplete, 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 deplete. And then just, Oh, let me just give myself a little trickle to just kind of get by or get through. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a learning curve for women and that's where we're at our best that's where we're at our best and god the superpower like that's my sweet spot like i, I resonated with that girl you know like my god we we are so powerful as women like we like just just like like the vision i'm getting is you know gal gadot from Wonder Woman, you know, she was actually my idol growing up, you know, with Linda Carter back in the day, you know, I was a child in the 70s. Um, and I had the Wonder Woman underwears and like, you know, I just like, I was like, she was my idol. And then when the movie came out a few years ago, it so landed for me because her message was about love. 
she came from love and she was of service she was in service to healing humanity through love her weapons are not even weapons they're just weapons of protection to keep herself safe with her shield and to deflect that which can harm her and the lasso of truth you know the, yeah that's true like, yeah like i'm even just this is just coming through in the moment right we never know it's going to come through i'm realizing the, and the trinity of three she had three support pieces in place for herself so that she can be in her superpower of i show up in love i show up in support i no i don't do the fight i do the putting my stake in the ground that i stand for love the truth and that's what heals all and so what i'm getting in the moment around the super powerful woman is remembering our authentic truth that our superpower is when we return to love for ourselves and then we always show up in a loving and kind way with all others and whatever is not ours instead of having to penetrate and harm us like a bullet like a wound you know like our being you know shot we say no 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 i'm not going to allow that to harm me and have me bleed out or have me be hurt. I'm going to deflect what's not mine so I can stay in my love bubble and keep offering love. Because we as women are in our superpower when we are in our soft feminine and we're loving and we're kind. And what leads us out is when we allow other people's woundedness to penetrate into us. Because that's all it is. People that are not kind and loving or say meaningful things to us or any of that, our superpower is to have compassion for them, keep ourselves safe and remember, oh, that's just their woundedness. That's just their hardness to not have it hard in us. Because that's where we do things when we want to get hard. I love that. And I love the comparison with uh, Wonder Woman mm -hmm. as well. Because it's all about like just breathing in and stepping into your to your superpower and and your voice and just um, what I heard also from what you're saying is like coming together with your values, mm -hmm. which is so important to um, like not compromise on your values. I think. There is a lot of things you can do around, you know, collaboration and and partnership and, you know, creating uh, something together with other people. And and those values are something that you need to share in common. Right. Because like as a group, as a community in a partnership, uh, mm -hmm. you have to have those values very clear. And when you said about, you know, love and truth, those are such strong values. And it's not just an ego thing, like, oh, she's wonderful, I'm Wonder Woman. It's about, I'm standing up, I'm taking a stand for my values. This is what I heard from what you're sharing too, that is more about taking the stand and taking a stand for yourself as well. And what I heard also from the card, um, it caught me off guard too, because I talk so much about self-love and self-compassion all the time. And it's such a presence in my life, in my daily life. And I'm, you know, I consciously make a presence of, you know, loving myself and saying, I'm here for you. I love you, Julia. I'm here for you. And, and that relationship with myself. And then when it said, name all the things you love, when I first heard it, I did not think of myself. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I thought, uh, you know, because I consider myself so evolved into self-love that it caught me off guard. The fact that when I heard that, I was thinking, oh, nature, the sky, you know, acting, performing, public speaking, music, uh, you know, healthy foods, animals, <laughs> some like, people. Are you in the <laughs> equation, right? <laughs> human beings I thought of everything and I did not think of myself like you know I didn't even think of like it wasn't even like on the list 
<laughs> and then I turned it around and I was like, what do I have to do today? And it said, you know, well, are you one of them? Of all the things that you just named? And I was like, oh my God, no, like I did not name myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I wonder when does that become second nature? It made me reflect on that, mm -hmm. that when someone says name all the things you love, you don't feel guilty or, or you know, to, to name yourself and there's no shame around it or ego or to just say, I love myself mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. And put your, and put yourself on the list, you know, at least be on the list. I'm not even going to say make yourself number one on the list, but at least put yourself on the list. <laughs> right. Like start, but start there and then like you can move your way up. Or, or really exactly. What I'm seeing is like move your way up where then it becomes a circle. So it's not like you're at the top. It's that we need to be at the, the apex, like the new North Star, because we're the space holders of everything. We're the space holders of our life. We're the co-creatrixes of our life. And we are the common denominator in every way and every relationship that we engage into our life. So we need, so we're like the North Star, we're the guiding post. So like the vision that I'm seeing as you were speaking was there's no hierarchy at all. Like as you were speaking, what I heard about, um, it's not about the ego. It's like, no, it's not. It's the exact opposite. It's about the eradication of the ego itself. It's about standing for your soul, rooting, you know, that's who you stand for versus standing for your ego like who is leading the show so like you know i can't tell you honey if we're in a human body we are working something out we are continuing to integrate and what i have learned and continue to learn in every moment and it softens me literally julia it softens me now where i can laugh you know is we're always deepening into learning and integrating what we are sharing, what we are teaching. Um, because that's how we learn it for ourselves. It's like we become our own teachers when we speak it, when we, and we keep reminding ourselves. And, you know, here I teach the work of the sacred feminine, right? All my work is about coming home to your feminine nature. And I literally had an experience before our call, a couple of things came up and I, felt myself in that moment, I felt my body tense up and want to do the push away, like, oh, and I recognized it because now I don't, I don't walk with my, this, the egoic self at all. There's no resistance. There isn't, I walk with, what am I, every moment of every day is I'm here to engage in life, enjoy life. And what am I here to learn today? What am I here to learn today? And today there was that moment of, I witnessed a couple of things come up and I felt myself tense which is an old pattern that's hardening tense tensions hardening and i recognize it i giggled i'm like what am i getting tense about you know and it was so my point is that literally twice today i had two wonderful opportunities to help realign me and continue to realign me into who i am as the sacred feminine and and live in this relaxed way all the time and any moment can give me an opportunity to refine that. So I personally like whatever I'm teaching, I giggle, I'm in a deeper learning of it. And I welcome it because I'm like, yeah, I can never be more, you know, refined in something, right? Like we, there's always more to open and refine. And, you know, it's the mind or the egoic self that thinks that we get reach an arrival point. Well, then we're there. It's like saying like, Saying with there is like saying, oh, then it's never going to get better. Oh, I lean into it. I lean into learning. Being, oh, it's keep getting better. Keep getting better. Keep getting better. Keep getting better. It's like soul, 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 soul. No more ego self. No more ego self. No, you know, like there's no hierarchy. So that's what I saw when you were speaking, rising yourself to the top. Because then, and then everything is a circle, your animals and nature and the people you love. And, you know, you're part of the circle and, and, and they're part of the circle with you. 
-hmm. No hierarchy. I love that. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And, and it resonates with me. Um, this, you know, message or this meaning of the soul, that is where it comes from the feed your soul, you know, not your ego. Mm -hmm. Because I think that well, not I, I think, but I actually experienced to just being in that space of the ego based you know, achievements, ego-based, you know, mentality. And sometimes like I'll still see it, you know, every once in a while mm -hmm. come up, but I kind of like stay in check now. I have more awareness around it, which I think is a big step, which is just saying, you know, okay, I hear you. I hear you. I see you. You're there. I don't have to follow my ego. I don't have, to, I can recognize it. Or if I get triggered, you know, or if I feel like I'm not in a space or in a loving space or in a soul space, I will now take a step back and say, okay, I need to meditate again. You know, I need to listen to affirmations or I need to take a breath or I need to go, you know, go outside and get some fresh air. Feed your soul since feeding the ego. Uh, Yes, I'll feed my soul. If I see the ego is, is rising, I will feed my soul. I'll be like, okay, hold on, hold up, ego. Stay there. Exactly. You know, I'm gonna go feed I'm gonna go feed my soul real quick and we can come back to this conversation when I'm coming from a soul perspective. So I think that is the biggest shift that I've felt because you can't say, Oh, I don't have an ego anymore. I think that would be unnatural or it wouldn't be authentic with myself. I would it wouldn't you know, it wouldn't be with integrity with myself because part of it is also being authentic to what you, what you're present to, what you experience and having awareness around that. I think it's a big step to not, not uh, have actions or reactions around that ego self and just letting the wave come, you know, get, get through you. Like if I'm having like a moment like that, I would just, you know, let it pass through me. Mm -hmm. more than tr maybe like in the past or or you know I would like react on it or try to attach myself to it and then now I'm just recognizing it and allowing it to just pass through me yeah <laughs> and you know sometimes it sometimes it takes longer than you would like sometimes it takes a day or two sometimes it takes an hour or a minute, you know, you don't know. It depends like what, in what space you're in, but it could be quick. It could be just like a shift in consciousness that you just listen to something or you just shift something in your breath and just take a deep breath. And then you just feel like you're in a different space, you know? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I think all of that ser serves you to be in that space of the soul. And just most importantly is to communicate from that space. I think that's that's the biggest shift that I've noticed in myself and in my relationships is that I will make an effort to communicate from that space. So I will only communicate or most of the time, let's say like I, tr you know, most of that's like my intention is to communicate mostly from that space. Mm -hmm. and, and then if I'm not in that space, then wait a day or two and then put myself in that space. And then once I'm in that space, then uh, channel the message or have clear communication or have inspired action around it. And, and until then, just keep doing things that feed my soul. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. I love everything you shared and, and there's like a whole big picture and, and I can tell you exactly what, the, what that is. If you'd like to hear, it's phenomenal. Sure. Yes. I'm curious and so, interested. Tell me. I love when you said it would be like egoic to sit on have an ego. Absolutely. That's no different than saying for us to not acknowledge the egoic self is like saying I'm a, I'm the soul or a spirit and I don't have a human body or, you know what I mean? Or I don't have a brain. You know what I mean? Like the egoic self is part of the human experience. Um, and we're here moment by moment to choose who do I feed? And when we are walking as observer, like walking with soul, we're able to observe 
and 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 we have there is kind of like a risen a risen above but not of hierarchy just like a like the eagle being able to see the big picture like oh like now i am witnessing this human experience and i know that i chose to come here to incarnate into this human body as julia as amy for my soul healing for my karmic balancing for my highest learning for my evolution my ascension to oh, like be initiated into all the gates of heaven so to speak where we are gifted amazing sacred knowledge that we really it would be dangerous for us to have if we still had woundedness in us because we wouldn't we could use it for harm versus for good so it's all about at least in what I know to be true. The more we heal, the more we laugh. The less the, it's not this or that conversation comes up. It's more just an awareness of the more aware I become and feed my soul, the more the egoic self is gonna freak out and try to pull me and hold me back. And so it's up to me to always recognize if ever I have a conversation of, I know this already, I know better, I'm above this. Those are all dialogues of the egoic self trying to keep you from what's here for me to heal because I'm being freak triggered. So mm -hmm. if we are ever in a space and, and you hit the nail on the head where we are reactive or we feel a charge move through us, that's that moment to not engage because that's basically what's happening is a wounded part of us, a scared part of our personality, a frightened part of our personality, most likely some sort of PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, is being triggered in us based on prior woundedness in our upbringing, in prior experiences, in past lives, all the way to in collective consciousness, whatever it may be. And it's up to me to not have that run me because if I react, then what happens is it's like a mutiny takeover, this wounded part of me, like maybe it's like the rebellious 17 year old that gets pissed when someone says something and like, I'm not going to have that. No one can control me. You know, maybe that's how what shows up. Oh, there's that wounded rebellious teenager that's showing up that feels the need to defend and be hard like that because she needed to be at that age because she didn't have the skills to take care of herself or it wasn't safe, you know, the people weren't protecting her. And then as an adult, we can recognize, oh, that's an activated part of my personality. That's of the egoic self, not here for me to judge, here for me to love. Mm. Not here for me to judge, here for me to love because that part of me does not feel loved and that part of me needs healing and it's up to me now to give myself that healing and the way that we return home to self-love is to learn about all our different parts of our woundedness so that we can talk to that part of ourselves and what is it that what is what is it here that you need why are you getting reactive what's going on here wow you yeah. just touched Exactly. Like, I, it's kind of like everything just came together in my mind right now. <laughs> right? I, feel like, I feel like the whole energy is just relaxing and acknowledge this part of self instead of being, I'm not going to go to the ego. I'm not going to, it's like, okay, I do need to take space because I need to address what's bleeding out. I need to address this, this wounded teenager. So I'm going to go do that and take my space and be in relationship with this part of me and come to heal and, 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 learn, and learn how to keep myself safe. So then when I do engage with the person, place or thing, whatever it is that was reacting, that causing a reaction to me, the person who's showing up is not the wounded teenager. It's the sovereign queen. It's wonderful. Amy, you're like the first person has made me cry on my podcast. <laughs> I'm like so touched by what you're saying and I'm literally like emotional over this like I know that every 
<laughs> we've had so many like emotional conversations but honestly i'm like getting emotional right now because wow like and we're alive so it's like i can't even edit this <laughs> <laughs> beautiful it's just energy moving through you it's so true. you know yeah. tears are an acknowledgement of truth and healing and release and, and i'll tell you why and i'll, I'll share I, i'm and i'll share what's happening right now i think it's so beautiful what you just said that it's like the reason you know we talk about self-love and like why is it so hard to like love ourselves fully because we have to love our wounded parts as well and not only as well but especially especially our wounded parts we can't only love the lovable no yeah, those are the easy parts to love that's called conditional love when we love what's easy. <laughs> unconditional love and it hit the nail on the head it's learning to love the wow that we don't love and we turn a blind eye and be, I don't want to look at that part of me. I don't like that darkness in me. I don't like, and then that part of us controls us and runs the show. And then we wind up not being of integrity to ourselves. Like we betray ourselves because we're allowing this part of ourselves that we're judging and don't love to then do things and act in ways that really are not loving. It doesn't, like you said, it doesn't feel good when you are reactive and are nasty in a conversation or like, someone says something that upsets you and it, it activates you and then you, you know, get the, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't make you feel good, right? Yeah. It makes you feel better when you can engage in a conversation in a loving, healing way. So, yeah. We just had a breakthrough moment, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. This was powerful. Wow. I know that we have deep conversations, but I was not expecting that I was gonna like pour my heart out live like this. This is probably the most honest and open conversation I've had. Um, but it really is like, you know, hitting the nail in the head and the point that we all have parts that we don't love. Mm -hmm. And that those are the parts that we need to love. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it really is because, um, you know, there are parts that you don't want to love because you don't want to accept that they're there, that, yeah. that, that, that's part of, that that's part of you. You don't want to accept that you have a part of you that maybe is not your best self, that maybe, you know, in, in times that we're always talking about being our best selves and, and showing up as your, you know, highest self and for the greatest and highest good. But what about when you're not your best self? And I think that that is the, the, that is the breakthrough that I was I, I'm experiencing, you know, in our conversation right now. That is, that is, and and that's what I was going through. And I just I felt like a release. That was like the tears were coming down. I just felt like a release into like, wow, I really I love myself now. Mm -hmm. I can say I love myself. It was like the moment that you said that it kind of allowed me to just love all parts of myself without picking and choosing like, oh, I love this one because this one looks good. This one right. makes me feel good. This right. one makes me look better. This one makes me feel like a good person. This one, you know, I like this one because everybody loves that part of me. You know, <laughs> it's like you don't get to pick and choose. You get to love all of it. <laughs> and that's what love is. That's what self-love is. Mm -hmm. Hello, <laughs> you know. Loving, all this, loving ourselves the way we crave to be loved and when we're in our when we're walking with our soul and we're in our authentic soul truth and authentic need of the soul the sacred soul where we show up in reverence and joy and, and love and, and healing all of that is the healthy craving to love unconditionally and to be loved unconditionally i mean let's and and the egoic self is never about unconditional, authentic love. It's about filling a void, needing to feel valuable, or needing approval from others. Or like, you know, it's 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 not authentic love. It's it's not an authentic need. It's a conditional need to make the parts of us that we don't love feel better. And 
like you said, when we really drop in, does it feel good if someone only loves parts of you or conditioning loves you or you need to be a certain way or do a certain way in order to get a person's full on love? No. It doesn't. And this is what we do to ourselves. We do it to ourselves and don't even realize we do it. I, you know, Julia, I mean, I'm in my late 40s uh, in physical time. And every time in this journey of mine, I've been on the um, conscious healing path. And the moment when I put the stake in the ground and said, I'm going to, I'm committed to my soul's growth versus the egoic world of drama, you know, and and then needing to go through the process of not judging or hating all the times that I did, you know, dabble in the dark or play in the drama. You know what I mean? I needed to learn to love those parts of myself when I did do that. I was in my late 20s. So we're talking over two decades later in physical time. And every, now it's like every month that passes, not even every year or two years. I'm like, gosh, like, Hang on. Mm. Even in just the past couple of years, I got to some deeply rooted parts of me that were really painful to own. And when I did, they were the most liberating most liberating experience because then that part of me couldn't control me anymore. I remember, and I'll never forget this, and this was a big turning point for me, I'll never forget it. I can't remember what age I was, but it was, I, I must have been in my early 40s because I remember I was, I, you know, I'm from New York, I live in LA now, and I was going back for a visit to New York and, and at the time, I was staying with my family the whole time at my parents' house. And I thought I had healed so much with all of my family members. Now I look back. Now it is like fully healed. And I also am a little hesitant to ever say fully healed, you know, fully awake, fully tense free, fully loving. It's just amazing. Full, like it's just, I never thought it could be possible. So my point is that when I was visiting my family in my probably my early 40s, I look back and I'm like, oh man, I still have a lot of work to do, but I didn't think I did. And I'll never forget, I wouldn't, because it was such a breakthrough for me and it changed my life in all sorts of good ways. I was visiting my family and now things are great. I have a, I'm so grateful. I have the most loving, healthy, healthy, healed relationship with both my sisters. and we needed to do a lot of work together to get to that place. Because sisters, growing up, there's a little lot to, you know, hash out and a lot of pink elephants we needed to get out. And, and we, we both dug in and did the work um, of healing and did our own self-reflection, all of that. The point is, there was an opportunity for healing. And I remember um, something happened with one, of, with one of my sisters that we've done some of the deepest dealing with. And I got irritated. And I went into the, into the room with her. She was in the bedroom with her, me, with her and my, our mother. And I made a comment. I'll never forget it. I went in to get my computer. It was like one in the morning. And I'm like, oh, I gotta check something. And I heard my sister talking with my mother and I go into the room and I, and I went to grab my computer. And in that moment, I said, Susan, when are you going to like stop talking and let mom go to bed? It's not really, a, that's kind of, you know, wasn't really the nice thing to say. I didn't think anything of it at the time. But there was so much underlying things going on. And like she was staying in our old room and I was on the air mattress in the spare room. And I had some resentment about that. And it was just all this stuff. So... Of course, I go into a healing session with my spiritual teacher the next day. She was in New York, my original teacher who I met in my late 20s. 
and I was all tense and I, and I bring this up. I'm like, oh, my sister is, you know, being my sister again and blah, blah, blah. making the back hurt, right? But why am I irritated? And my teacher looks at me, God bless her. And she says, why'd you make that comment? Ouch. And I had to, and I've always been self-reflective and I looked at it and I'm like, why did I feel the need to make the comment? Why did I feel the need? Who in me, not even why did I, who in me felt the need at one o'clock in the morning to have to go into the room to get my computer for a work thing that could have waited. And then on top of it, provoke and make a comment that was not very kind. That was basically saying, you never shut the F up. Like as if my mother and my sister, they were in, they're enjoying their time together. Like the whole thing was who in me needed to go in there and provoke and create the problem. What part, what part of you? Yeah. What part of you? Yeah. That makes Cause it, sense. Yeah. Cause it created all this, like my sister was, Oh, the next day she was, oh, I mean, it was not fun. It was not fun. She was really nasty with me. And I, I look back now and I go, yeah, I could see why. So the reason I share this is because that was a breakthrough moment of, the places where it always takes to the tangle. How are we participating? And who in us is participating? Who is showing up? Even saying like, I'm only going to show up in my best self. That's a judgment right there as if like all of ourselves isn't beautiful. Like we do the best we can. And so the story around this and my sharing was, that was like a painful moment of like, instead of getting defensive or making it about, oh, my sister was so nasty with me the next day. My teacher brought it back and was like, well, how did you participate? How did you co-create that with your sister? And I realized, wow, I started it. I, inst I was the one that instigated it. Who in me needed to instigate? Who in me had to be nasty with my sister? Who in me was not, was so upset that I, I had to do that, I had to poke the baby. And um, yeah, it was all the wounded, resentful. Yeah. Parts of me. We're up. Yeah. And we I'm wound up having a huge healing. We wound up having a huge what? We wound up having a huge healing. And that was probably one of the turning points of our relationship towards healing. Because I really got to the root of a place in the relationship where I was creating the chaos and I owned it and I apologized to her. And it really began to turn things around for us. Thank you for sharing. That's a beautiful story of when we don't show up as our best selves and we still love ourselves anyway. It's like a trial. Yeah. Get out of my room. That's, we the, room that's the hardest. Yeah, it was the child in me. It was like, you know, I revert, like like this reversion kid. Rever you know what I mean? Like, I want, why you would, we used to fight for yeah. who got to be in the room because we shared a room for a lot of our years growing up it was like so you know just unhealed unresolved younger versions of myself took over in that moment yeah and it's funny that you brought it up also the 17 year old self because even earlier today um i told you i was doing a meditation but also i like listening to like abraham hicks affirmations and yeah. earlier today i was listening to one of her segments and it's funny that I, you know, usually I don't, she doesn't talk much about that, uh, the teenage self, but today specifically, one of the things that she was talking about was the 17 year old self. And it just popped up, you know, in my experience, law of attraction. And it was saying, and one of the things that she was saying was, is the 17 year old self, you know, when you look back at that 17 year old self, but even if you have kids, just talking about, you know, teenage, teenage kids or, but also like your teenage 17 year old self, like I, I was thinking of that too, like when you're making decisions as, as that 17 year old self, were you making decisions based on lack, meaning I hate everything, I'm going to walk out of here, I'm leaving everything behind from there, from that perspective, or were you making decisions from the point of view of abundance that was like, 
I'm, you know, doing this because this is, you know, uh, the the universe is giving me abundance where I'm going, and I'm giving up, I'm being given opportunities, and I'm excited. And what what was your point of attraction when you're making those uh, decisions as your 17 year old self? And I would and that made me reflect on that. That you know, I would say that some of my decisions were based on abundance, like oh, I'm getting all these opportunities over here. So look how amazing this is. I'm gonna go over here. And then at the same time, there was a little bit of it that it was like, you know, being a teenager sucks. I want to grow up. I'm going to run away from everything and, mm -hmm. and I don't have to deal with this kind of thing. But obviously, when you're making decisions from the point of view of abundance, they say, oh, look, I have all these opportunities over here. How amazing this is. You have better experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is realizing when like where where are those those decisions coming from is it from excitement and abundance and you know looking forward to something or is it coming from somewhere else and and how do you you know sort it out you know these kind of little decisions that you said you know what what in me made me feel this way or why did i react in a certain way or why did i have the need to to follow through with this, why couldn't I just be my best self and, you know, follow along with like abundance, but also part of the, of the teaching and part of the learning experience is that even when you don't show up as your best self to forgive yourself and know that's part of the contrasting experience and then just move on, love yourself anyway, keep loving yourself, love yourself even more, and and then make decisions from the point of view of abundance exactly and change your behavior you know like exactly it's like you know when you were speaking what i was hearing was like it it is really the shift of instead of the reactive decision making which is always a result of some sort of traumatic experience i need to get out of here I, no one's going to control me. Um, I'm going to, I don't need to deal with this. You know, that, that's re, all of that's react, reactive as opposed to open and reflective. You know, when we're, open, when we're in alignment with, you know, as Abraham picks, as, as that collective speaks of abundance versus lack, you know, what that really is, is the soul knows that I always have more than I need. And, and the soul knows, oh, I'm here to, for the learning. I'm here for, you know, what's here for me. Like, it's like every moment of every, it is like a gift waiting to be opened. Like, oh, what's here? What's here? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Where the lack is like the egoic self that's on survival of like starving all the time. You know, I need to just survive. I need to just survive. I need to just survive. And when we really look back at the younger versions of ourselves, especially the 17 year olds, where there's a lot of conflict of like, I'm attempting to become an adult, but I really don't have the fortitude. Seriously, like, let's call it faith. Let's call it spade a spade. No 17 year old has the fortitude to know how to be an adult because they're not an adult yet. They're still a, a young adolescent attempting to become adult. They're not even into adult, young adulthood yet, you know? And then we're raised in a society that doesn't teach people how to become healthy young adults into adulthood. We're not raised how to have healthy communication, how to be responsive. We're not raised go, or go into like the Waldorf school of, you know, that acknowledges the soul. Like we're raised in a society that's uh, still a, 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 a uh, production of the patriarchal paradigm from the age of Pisces, which is all about manipulation and control, institution and religion. You're only valuable if you go to institution. We're going to tell you what we need to teach you because we think it's valuable. Why is it valuable to learn geometry, but it's not valuable to learn healthy communication skills? Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's something that it's changing, you know, slowly. That mindset definitely is shifting, especially now. I think the last year it has made us really like go inwards, go within and and you know check yourself kind of kind of mentality like reflect yeah. on how are we showing up to the world how can we make uh shifts in our mindset 
and also be true to yourself and be authentic and having integrity with your soul and with with your values with your passions so we're all learning you know um obviously otherwise we wouldn't be here so we're all learning um and sometimes one thing that also um that i was thinking about was around self-love because deep inside when you think about that teenager or or even if it's not your teenage self but that wounded self uh, you know looking back what do i really need like what does this teenager need a lot of the times it's love exactly i was just hearing that too <laughs> and when you when you give that to yourself that it's like oh you're gonna be like your teenage self i love you I still love you. Yes, I love you. And then if you just keep repeating, that's like one of the exercises around self-compassion and self-love is just saying your name and saying, I love you. So it's just, Julia, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. And it's just like, until you understand, you know, deep in your, in the, you know, in the depth of your being that I will always love you. And that's that. So you don't have to act out anymore to prove that I love you because I do love you. And I, that's what I kept hearing too when we're talking about that teenage self, like where, where is it coming from and where, where that decision com comes from, those decisions come from. And I think a lot of it has to do with insecurity around self-love and just trying to prove your worth, you know, coming back to value and worth, trying to prove your worth as a, as a being in this planet and finding your place and what is my value what is my worth and you know self-love is something that will it's like you telling yourself you don't have to prove anything you're loved period <laughs> there you can. those that don't love themselves don't have it to give to others so it's our job to love them anyway. To have that's how we cultivate compassion as human beings is actually by not receiving the love that we crave. Because to cultivate the compassion, to learn how to be that which we choose to be and that which we never had, um, that is the eradication of walking with the egoic self and walking with soul is that moment when, you know, the reality is, how many people do you know grew up in fully unconditional love families? I personally don't know of anybody where every single decision that a child made in any stage of their life, the parents celebrated them. Even when there was a temper tantrum or when the rebellious teenager, you know, and yeah, I get there's a place of healthy discipline, but what I'm speaking of is when a teenager is acting out because the parents are fighting. The parents, and then they cut, they cut curfew. The parents will ground them and make it about them as opposed to the communication because we weren't raised this way to check in with the 17 year old of what's going on here? Why'd you cut, why do you feel the need to cut curfew? Like, what was that about? What were you trying to gain control? You know, and but parents show up because they weren't trained to be unconditionally lovable. How many, you know, friends do you know where their parents or your parents, you know, or, or parents said, I support you in whatever you want to do in your life, anything, whatever it is, have at it. This is your soul journey. You're going to make your mistakes, learn your lessons. You don't want to go to college? Okay, don't go. You know, like when they're 17, they're they're entering young adults. It's like, I don't know of any. <laughs> I don't know either. You know, with, with <laughs> full on. I thought like, if you have an example, please share because I don't like I don't know of any. Yeah. I cannot uh, recall at this moment. Yeah. And you know, the lesson thing, when you were talking about value and, and knowing our value is as far as because I, I you know I, I my work in this world this sole mission of mine in this moment and for many years now has been about um helping to helping women to remember 
their inherent value and their superpowers, you know? And that then awakens and helps to heal humanity and, and just so many things. The heals the burdens, uh, the, the children don't need to carry, there's ancestral healing, there's so many places involved that when a woman focuses on remembering her value and healing all that is keeping her from that, uh, she literally becomes the healing for humanity. Like literally, it's not what you do, it's who you become energetically. And you literally are the butterfly effect. And so when I heard you speak about the value and always trying to prove, always trying to prove, it's not just this lifetime of where maybe in our upbringing, we weren't told you were valuable or we were only valuable if we got a certain grade or, you know, I know that was for me. I could show up with an A minus. I wasn't celebrated. I know you have the potential to get an A plus. Well, here's the A plus. And I'm, I remember feeling crushed, like, fuck, it's never good enough. So I, <laughs> the New Yorker <laughs> comes out and, you know, but that's really like, that's okay. cool. that was a 13 year old to me that like inside was riling inside at, you know, my parents of like, are you effing kidding me? Like, and so it not only goes back to our upbringing, it goes back. When have women been valued? When have women been valued to the point of humanity understanding the sacredness, we are the givers of life. Without women, none of us would exist. We were given a gift to have the ability to create miracles inside our body without ever going to school of how to do it. Our body just knows. It goes so far back. We're talking even before the 11th century when there was any reverence for the woman, where we said grace to a woman, even if we look at our religions, and we're not bringing religion into it because what I mean by that is all religions are diluted, the purity of the spirituality is diluted because all religions have the inputs of mankind, of the man uh, gaining one in control. Like they are the ones that interpreted sacred truths and then made it into something it's not. Like premarital sex is a sin. That is such a freaking lie. Like it's basically saying that which creates us is sinful. Like it's making a part of us bad. And then we're at fault of it because the woman gave the apple to Adam. That's not even in the Bible. You do know that even in the Bible, and I don't come from Catholic, I don't come from that upbringing. And I remember a few, many years ago, it must have been about a decade. I'm like, I really need to dive into this. What's going on here? And I read the first chapter of the Bible. Do you know there's no word apple in the entire chapter of Adam and Eve, but somehow it became an apple. It's almost as a piece of fruit. Mm. And then we don't- I, can, I am Catholic, but I cannot speak for every verse on the Bible. So I will believe on your, you know, I'll, tr I'll trust your interpretation or, you know, where, yeah. like your reference, but I can't speak for the whole first chapter of the Bible. It's the only chapter I've ever read. <laughs> Because I'm like, I'm going to get to the core. I'm going to get to the core of this. You know, why, you know, what's going on here? And I'm like, wow, that's so interesting that even in the words, like the words of that entire chapter is piece of food, piece of food, piece of food, piece of food. But anytime you hear people tell the stories about the apple, you know, and there was never, yeah. it was never even, an apple was never even mentioned. So, well, one thing that I will speak to is the, the, definitely the Catholic guilt that, I grew up with <laughs> that is very familiar uh you know being from brazil uh we're yeah. very catholic like the culture is very catholic and there's definitely a lot of shame and and guilt around embracing being a woman and you know sexuality and all of that which comes you know from the cultural and and catholic you know upbringing upbringing and, and background and you know, it's not something that you can easily get through, actually, like, you know, overcome, 
because and just speaking I'd rather like speak to worth because it's something that I can speak more you know fully that I I have more knowledge around it even like experience wise um but I do feel like that there is you know growing up there is like this stigma or this shame around it uh you know um being like embracing your feminine or embracing your woman self like the queen that you are like that is so beautifully like you do with your work that is about really finding your worth uh your you know sense of self-worth which is something that it's not so talked about and a lot of women struggle with it um you know i feel like maybe it's shared more in like closed circles or um you know in of course, like I'm not going to dive into, you know, circles or like confidentiality. Uh, but I do feel that women have a, you know, feel more comfortable sharing that with their girlfriends or their close friends or like in circles that are, you know, women only, but not, it's not something that is completely embraced by mainstream. That's what I'm trying to say, that it's fully talked about uh, as far as how much, how many women struggle with self uh, self-worth and just finding your inner worth your inner value your inner wisdom and being able to embrace that and just feel like they have that like inherent value exactly. and I'm sure that a lot of people struggle with that not only women but I have seen so many women that I even had no idea and sometimes they're so powerful and successful and on the outside you know um even like, you know, I can speak even for myself, like, and on the outside, everyone thinks that you have a perfect life and like, oh, you're so strong and successful and powerful and your life is perfect. And nobody really takes the time where like, sometimes you don't even have the space to share, you know, what you're dealing with your inner workings with your inner self and what are you really, you know, struggling with and, and self-worth is like a big theme it's a big theme that has come up multiple times in conversation and circles and you know and all the time it, it, it comes up with like women finding their sense of self-worth so I think the work that you're doing is beautiful you know I've been a part of the work as well I've definitely benefited from it just being a part of of the women's worth academy and that's you know it, it's beautiful work that you're doing because there isn't and I think even the first time that we connected, I was saying like that there isn't that separation sometimes that it one um, between embracing your sense of self-worth and sexuality. And sometimes those those two things get confused that people think that embracing your sense of self-worth means, oh, you can have sex with everybody. Mm -hmm. I am a sexual being. And I feel like that's get to, get, that uh, interpretation gets so twisted because that doesn't mean that at all it's completely separate, you know, and I feel like embracing your sense of self-worth is like completely separate from sexuality. You know, everybody has their sexuality and their sexual urges and desires, and that's fine to embrace that as well without shame. But I feel like the sense of self, uh, self-worth is completely separate. It's like a, it's just like being uh, able to love who you are and embrace who you are without shame. And without having to be sexual or without having to be a certain way or fit into a certain mold that it has been, you know, we've been told that we have to fit in as women. I think that's what really self-worth is to me, Absolutely. you know, especially personally. Not needing to be a certain way in order to be, to know your worth, not seeking outside yourself by others telling you you're worthy and then contorting yourself to be that way to receive that. Uh, that confirmation from others, it's about remembering your worthiness inherently because we're women. It's truly remembering our feminine beauty until we embrace our femininity and we allow ourselves to soften until we heal all of the hardness, all the woundedness that basically has a lot of women looking like they have all their shit together, but all they've done is just put armor 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 and they just become men and then they show up powerful yeah. and strong let me tell you something a woman in her power is not powerful and strong in her in her hardness she's powerful in her surface true mm. power is when we don't need to have a guard we don't need to show up certain way we just love mm. Mm. 
that's beautiful power in your softness i love that i love that there's an ocean that is not contained is far more powerful than water that's in a container think of a tsunami far more powerful which is far much further than water in the and that's why we've been oppressed as women is because we are so powerful that we've been feared hmm. nobody says oh i'm excited for the tsunami bring it on people are running back <laughs> because we're powerful yeah and i'm not saying that we we function as tsunamis as women we can when we have woundedness then we can dot that energy out and we can destroy that's the whole point is our work as women in order to come home to our power is to heal within ourselves that which can use our power in destructive ways because that's the masculine destroys to rebuild the feminine restores yeah She's all about building and building. She creates, she creates. The feminine energy, yeah. Embracing that feminine energy, yeah. Feminine is not penetrate, is not invade. We do not have penises as a woman for a reason. Our physical bodies are a direct, and I'm talking about sexual preference or how we identify ourselves. I'm talking about when our soul comes down onto this planet, there are many different reasons and many different things we're healing. And one of those things is how we incarnate. And if we have incarnated as a woman, then we're part of the collective consciousness to help heal all the woundedness in our life. Mm. And we as women are so. And our physical bodies are a direct incarnation of our softness and receptivity, just like a male's body is the physical incarnation of more of a sturdy masculine that's meant to support and hold, not, not hurt and in inappropriate penetrate. You want to think of a hard penis more like a pillar of support. You know, in Tantra, mm -hmm. the, the um, penis term is a lingam, which translates to magic wand, and the female anatomy of vagina, uh, the sac uh, sacred Tantra. Uh, Sanskrit is um, yoni, which translates to sacred space. Yet our, so sacred sexuality is when we really remember our value as a woman, we just, we actually become discerning of who enters our sacred space and who doesn't. We'd actually become less prosperous because we value mm -hmm. and we remember, oh God, this is the goddess now. I need to discern who's entering the sacred space. Yeah creating that sacredness around it yeah yeah around our space in every way yeah i loved our conversation this is such a beautiful conversation i oh my god i feel like there's so much healing and breakthroughs here i can't even begin to express my gratitude um, for you joining me here and and sharing so much and you know i think there is a lot of value um in, in everything that we talked about and it, it really moved me you know i had a on-air breakthrough <laughs> for the first time but and it takes a lot of vulnerability also to share this i feel like that was part of like my goal in these conversations that I, i've been having so many conversations around this and then none of it was you know, being recorded or like being put out there. So I really appreciate you having the vulnerability to share that uh, to the world and, you know, coming on the podcast with me because these are not easy conversations to be shared, but it's so powerful when we do, if we can invite more people into the conversation and just share from a place of, uh, you know, authenticity and self-worth and honoring our sacred space. <sighs> Yeah. yeah our home look vulnerability has been given a, a, a bad rap I'll, I'll leave you with this because it's another line i heard a lot of people say vulnerability is weakness or i need to state i'm going to have a vulnerable moment in order to be vulnerable all vulnerability is authentic truth 
and it's a space that creates intimacy. It's honesty. And who really wants to walk around with personas and masks and, and pretending to be a certain version or way that needs to be accepted by society? Doesn't it just feel better to just put all the masks, all the personas, and just be you? And not even yeah. have, like, like, even put down, like, coming home to, you know, it's funny because I, I actually am uh, about to launch my 21 Days to Restore Your Magical, Your Joyful Magical Feminine Program. And then it takes women through this beautiful 21 day journey from like in the living room with them, you know, and I give them the teaching and it's just, and they have home play, home play exercises. It's just, it was downloaded to me. I'm just so, so proud of this like birth thing that I'm, this, that I'm offering. My point is that I'm remembering actually a little sneak, pre, sneak peek preview in one of the days, I don't know which day, maybe day eight, I actually sneak peek. One of the titles of that, of the teachings is Vulnerability is Victorious. And I give the whole bigger teaching on what vulnerability really is, where really, it is, how to shrink this woman, how to cultivate it, uh, home play exercise on how to integrate that into your life. And one of the two is woman. Oh my God, we're so happy. We're so, it feels so much, but doesn't it feel better to like be light than have to like carry weight all the time? Oh, oh yeah. It feels great. I'm feeling lighter. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's really lovely. Yeah. And also we are closing on the last day of Women's History Month. Before oh. I forget to mention, how could I forget? Uh, this is about all about honoring women. So we've just finished. This is the last episode of our series for the whole month of March, honoring women. And I can't imagine a better conversation uh -huh. we had closing this series, you know, in a better way to honor women than finding our self-worth and ways to love ourselves and just embracing um, who you really are and all parts of you, all parts of who you are. Oh, I feel like that that is beautiful. Oh, uh, what a beautiful honor to that this divinely came together and our timing of when we had our call was like a closing ceremony of it. You know, it's just such a I I feel like uh like I'm I'm here I'm like remember Baskin Robbins 31 flavors, you know, like <laughs> 31 days, 31 flavors. And yeah, it's really it really is something we really give back so much more when we cultivate and learn self-love because then we become more loving. We become yeah. more loving. The more unconditional we are with ourselves, the more unconditional loving we are with others. And that is what heals the world. We don't, you know, we don't want to beat a wounded dog. We want to help to heal a wounded dog. You know, if someone's like getting defensive or attacking us, we don't want to attack back. We want to recognize, oh wait, that's a wounded person. I'm going to show up loving and compassionate. If they weren't wounded, they wouldn't feel the need to defend and attack. They're not attacking and defending me. They just feel the need to be that way. How can I love them when they're in that process while keeping myself safe? Well, thank you so much, Amy, for You're sharing. Welcome, I honor you. I appreciate you. Thank you for creating this beautiful space of healing. I feel so much healing, so much healing coming oh, through. I'm so, I'm so glad to be here. I really am. It really is such a, always a journey and a magical ride. And, um, you know, if it's okay with you, um, I happen to notice on my website that my opt-in page, for some reason, just had a glitch in it, you know? So if anybody did want to receive any of my free gifts or join my treasure tip, weekly newsletter or get on the waiting list for my joyful magical feminine program um my team and i literally just created a little separate opt-in link for that because the opt-in link on my website like if you're like oh i like what amy had to share and i want to just follow her or learn more it's not currently working on my website so if it's okay with you i'd love to just share that link so that people yes can, please uh know. share if you want to uh, if you'd like to share your website your social media how can people find you and join this beautiful work of finding your, your self-worth? Um, yeah, definitely. Here's the space to share and I'll be happy to create oh, a space for you. you. 
should I just send it to you or should I give you the link on the call now? What is the best? If, if you could share, just like say, tell them, tell them the link and then I'll post it as well. But if you want to just say what, how, what is your website and yes. how they can find I do. it? I'm going to, well, my website is simple womensworthacademy.com and that is uh plural you know w-o-m-e-n-s worthacademy.com and let me go ahead and and give you the uh, separate link to uh opt into my email list and to have um sneak peek first level access to um the launch of my 21 days to restore your joyful magical feminine yeah. program. and when when is that starting just so uh we're in the process of you know putting all the bells and whistles and just honoring the divine flow of when the baby is ready to come through i'm getting definitely probably definitely by the end of april i'm getting is so that's why if you sign if you opt into this link you're going to get an email of one it's uh, when you can register and enroll or just even learn more about Great. it. Great. So that yeah, I'll be happy to share. And how they can find you on social media? What is your yeah. hand, social media handle? So um, you know, let me. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna say the um, the Bitly link to get on the uh, waiting list. Uh, that is http colon double two forward slashes and then it's i think yeah, yeah go ahead it's bit bit dot ly one forward slash magical feminine wait list oh okay and i'll, I'll share um I'll share, I'll share that on the once once you post it i'll share it on on the on the link for the podcast. oh yeah that's so, that i appreciate that and uh, i can share all your but what is your social media handle if you yeah. want to follow so, you uh, it's instagram is Women's Worth Academy. And my Facebook, you can just, you know, um, I just, you can just add my personal page. Just add, add me as a friend, Amy Cheryl. And I'd love for us to continue to stay connected. You could always DM me privately. I'm here. I'm available. I'm, I'm here for all of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here for me today. You, this is a great so conversation. Welcome. And I keep thinking, you know, it kept popping up in my head too yeah. when you talked about watching Frozen. Yeah. I when, when we're having this conversation, I kept thinking about, yeah, it's just like in Frozen. I'm having like a lot of like moments of like Disney references. I think that's like yeah. where my moment is. But it really is like because I heard so much about Let It Go and I always thought about I always thought that Let It Go was about, you know, let it go, like leave it all behind. And when we're talking about the tsunami and it's so much it's so not that it's so much about let it go like let your power flow like don't hold back just mm -hmm. let it go right let yourself be who you really are mm -hmm. so um yeah i love i love that and i remember that you mentioned that to watch frozen and i didn't realize wow it's actually really deep so oh, um, I I love that movie. Yeah, and I just love this idea of like, just let it go, like let your feminine power come through and let your full self come through, you know, don't hold anything back. Mm -hmm. So that will be, I want to leave everyone with this message, don't hold anything back, just embrace your full self, love all parts of you, and, and just let it go, let your power flow, like, let everyone see how powerful you are. And be mindful to build, not destroy, to heal, not harm, and to always be reflective, re responsive versus reactive, and come home to your feminine hearts of compassion, compassionate love. It's where we're happy, it really is, as women. We deny ourselves our joy when we do not show up in love and compassion. Let's not do that to ourselves anymore. Amen, sister. Aho. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This Thank you. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. Lots of love.